Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week's topic, guys, is on some trade management, but a topic actually I've never discussed before with you guys. There are two specific management strategies I wanna talk about. I've been getting a lot of comments and emails about how come you don't trail out your trades? Is it okay to trail out your trades? You always shoot for two to one on your targets. Why don't you trail out your trades? Well, I don't talk specifically about trailing out today, but we do talk about trailing out. What we do talk about, however, is add and reduce management, which is like pyramiding, as well as something called half the shares, double the stop. And then towards the end of the lecture, I put those both, both those concepts I put together for you guys. It's an extremely powerful lecture. Why? Because trade management is one area that most of you guys are mucking up pretty bad. I mean, you're messing it up hardcore. You're using different management for different trades, different management for different days, different weeks, different months. I mean, you're tongue tied and twisted. You're all over the place and you don't want to be like that. Management is about being consistent. And on top of that, a lot of you new traders are stopping out far too often because you're using stop losses that are way too tight because you have this fallacy, this naive thought process that says, well, the tighter the stop, the bigger the risk to reward. Uh-uh, not always, especially on spready and whippy stocks, especially earlier in the morning, and especially as it relates to slippage on entry as well as stopping out. So be very careful, and it's one of the reasons we'll talk about half the shares, double the stop. It's profound, trust me. I don't use that word often, it's profound. It will change your trading life, and again, I don't, I'm not one of those furus who tries to exaggerate things. Trust me when I tell you, half the shares, double the stop, will open your eyes to a new style of trade management that will considerably help your P&L, more importantly, keep you from stopping out as often as you're stopping out. And then I combine that with add and reduce, which will help accelerate your winner. So we go both ends of the spectrum. One end helped to keep you in trades longer so you don't stop out. The other end of the spectrum is to help accelerate your trading gains and your trading winners. You'll be shocked at how powerful add and reduce can potentially be. All right, so as always guys, if you like these videos, please click, click, click that like button. If you really like the video, subscribe to the channel. I come out with this stuff every single week, guys. It's awesome content. So again, I'd appreciate that. Smash that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture, guys, is on supercharging your trading with add and reduce management. Um, we're going to talk about trade management today. A um, couple different topics on trade management today. All right. Meaning uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about something called half the shares, double the stop. And we're also going to talk about add and reduce, pyramiding, whatever you want to call it. So there's really two, maybe three, but... I call it two and a half, two and a half different management strategies that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and one of the reasons I chose to do a lecture on this topic is I've been getting a lot of questions about why can't we just trail something out? And there's nothing wrong with trailing anything out, but people just think because uh, I might do two R targets or Unmall does two R all or nothing that, you know, trail stopping is bad. Trail stopping is not bad. Trail stopping is fine. Uh, it's just, you know, as we'll talk about here in today's lecture, you have to find a management strategy that is conducive to your personality, your time constraints, et cetera, and so forth. So we will get into that. But before we do, when will the insanity stop? When will the insanity stop is today's question. Um, we do this every week. This week's is not as bad. Um, and the reason that this week's is not as bad, uh, and I alluded to this earlier, is because it's not something like incredibly egregious it's not like oh i lost 1.5 million dollars or anything like that this week's um is much more realistic to what most of you guys are actually doing okay and that's why i feel it's more powerful and more important or more potent or whatever you want to call it um because it's something that i feel like most traders are doing most of the time which is a problem okay um so this person uh obviously is not doing terribly well in terms of how many winners to losers they have, but I don't mind the small 
losers. 70 bucks, even $100. I think it's too much for a new trader, right? If you, you were starting at the top here, right? Uh, if you're down 70 bucks or 130 bucks, it's not, it's not good. You should only be risking $10 per trade. I tell you guys this all the time, but that's not where the egregious stuff comes in. The egregious stuff comes in is down here on FIVN, $465 down. Down here on SEDG, minus 542. Down here on Shopify, minus $2,000. Now this is admittedly a newer trader, okay? Uh, and this person emailed this to me. Um, I'm assuming just to let me know that things aren't going well for them. But you can see here, guys, this is the key at the bottom. Minus 19%, down about 20%, which is just over four grand. Um, so if you do the math, that's what? A twenty-five dollars to $30,000 account, okay? Now, it should take you a very, very, very long time to be down $4,000 if you're a new trader. Now, why is that? Because new traders should not be risking $100, $500, $1,000 on a trade. They should be risking 10 bucks on a trade. Um, so it might not look like much, but 20 shares of Shopify is actually quite a bit. Now, why is that? Because Shopify is gonna have a five or $10 stop loss, which means that risk is about one to $200. And what happened here, and I'm commenting because this person emailed me, so I know what's happening to this person a little bit. Um, what happened, yeah, pod sucks, Robert, I know. It is what it is, man. We did everything right, there's nothing you can do about it. Anyway, um, the point here is, is that this person let Shopify go past their stop loss. They did not take their stop loss on Shopify. Think about that. You're taking one of the whippiest, craziest stocks in the market, a seven, $800 stock, and you're not taking your stop loss on it. And what really bugs me and pisses me off about this is that there are tons, guys, and I do mean most. When I mean most, I mean probably 80% of gurus out there, chat rooms out there, wait for it, telling you not to use stop losses or to use mental stop losses. Are you kidding me? You're a new trader and the only thing you have going for you is risking small amounts of money with a stop loss so that you can not have to blow up your trading account and 80% of the professionals out there are telling you not to use stop losses or to not use hard stop losses, use mental stop. Don't put the stop in your platform or your system Use a mental stop, that's garbage. It's such BS, it's not even funny. Take the stop and move on. You'll come to learn stop losses are your friend. I understand, guys, I'm not an idiot. I get that oftentimes you will stop out and later on the stop will go on and hit your target. And you'll go, why did I take the stop loss? You know why you took the stop loss? Shopify, Shopify, Shopify is why you took the stop loss. One more time, everybody. Shopify is why you took the stop loss. How many trades does Shopify just eat up? At $10 risk, guys, that's 200 trades that Shopify just ate up. Let me repeat myself. Shopify just ate up 200 trades. If they're winning trades, it just ate up 100 winning trades. All it takes is one. You guys don't think it will ever happen to you, you know, because you're a guru and you know better and you went to Harvard, right? No, it will. One or two out of 100 trades, two out of 100 trades will blow up your account. Shopify is why you take your stop loss, okay? Sedge is why you take your stop loss. FIVN is why you take your stop loss. Take your minus $10 and call it a day. Say, all right, I messed up, it didn't work, next. All right, now, I'm gonna move on from this. The reason I brought this one up though is this is much more realistic to how it happens to most traders. They lose a little more than they should, a little more than they should, a little more than they should, boom, get spanked. That happens, and I know many of you watching this are going, yeah, uh, that's happened to me, yeah, that's happened to me. Now, on a positive note, on a positive note, somebody also sent me this. So I wanna, you know, balance out the bad with the good. I got a couple emails from people going, Jared, you always talk about, you know, all the negative with the insanity. Well, I'm trying to scare the bejeebas out of you guys, all right? This is something that somebody sent me last week, actually. Um, scalp trader as well as long-term trader. So note, they have a swing trading account up on the top left. Okay, this is 2019. They made 98.7% guys last year in their swing account. 98%. The NASDAQ, which had an unbelievable year, is up 35%. The S&P up 29%. That's an amazing year for the market. This person tripled it. Okay. 
intraday, and by the way, their IRA was up 34% also, which is basically even with the market, which is better than 99% of people are, are doing, including hedge fund managers, all right? Just matching the market, yes. Hear me out one quick second. Matching the market in your long-term portfolio, like your IRA, matching the market puts you in the top 1% of all gainers. I will repeat it, yes. Matching the market in your long-term IRA or 401k puts you in the top 1% of money earners. It's that good, okay? Scalp trading, this is their intraday trading. Intraday trading, up 276%. That's incredible, that's awesome. That's what you shoot for, two to 300% a year risking anywhere between half a percent to 1% for an experienced trader. We saw on the last side what new traders risk. New traders risk $10. New traders risk $10, okay? Experienced traders can risk up to 1%, but only experienced traders. Nonetheless, 276% across the board, all four of this person's accounts were fantastic last year, okay? So pretty impressive stuff. I just thought it was Wow, so I, I wanted to balance out the negative, what a beginning new trader looks like, losing money, not taking stop losses, versus what an experienced trader is capable of, all right? So without that, let's move on, all right? So what we're gonna talk about, guys, is I'm gonna break down um, about three or four trades that we took uh, in the past couple weeks. All of these are relatively new. This one is from May 11th, which was what, Monday of this week, okay? And what I wanna do, is go through these and you're gonna see them as they go and how you can separate them to make more money. So let me explain, okay? So this is called making the most of a trade. So over here on the left-hand side, this is a trade that we took, I took on Monday, okay? Wide range bar, narrow bar, narrow bar. This is pretty close to a four bar play. Yes, bar number one and bar number two, I would consider that relatively equal. I think it was like 15 cents off, something like that. So close enough for me to call this a four bar play. So we get in at 204 with a stop loss below this bottoming tail, which is 203.35, okay? So far, standard textbook, okay? The stock popped, pulled back, and then ripped. Well, for my management strategy, I actually stopped out at break even on this pullback. I actually stopped out at break even on this pullback. Didn't lose money, but, but then I watched it go higher and hit target later. A frustrating thing to have happen to you. Why? Because that's what my management is. My management is a very tight management style. Is that right for everybody? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, it depends. We'll get to that later. So that's the first trade. The second trade, same stock, it's still BABA. One is on a five minute, the other one is on a two minute, okay? Note, this two bar pullback on the five minute is a full fledged buy setup on the two minute. So 203.85 by 203.50, 35 cent stop and it rips, okay? So when you take a look at both of these, they're both legitimate textbook patterns, right? Four bar play here, buy setup over here, and that's when we separate them, right? We separate them, okay? Two separate patterns, let's move on. Now, the first pattern looks something like this, okay? Due to money management concerns, we can only add less than a quarter lot on the second trade. So what I'm doing here is I am taking the first trade and the second trade and putting them together, okay? We call it add and reduce, we call it pyramiding. Some of you are familiar, but now I'm gonna break it down and show it to you. Okay, so the first trade you get in at 204 with your stop at 203.35. Nothing wrong with it. And then the second trade formulates, and you go, wow, this is what we call a standalone trade. This trade could happen by itself, and that's very important. Even if, even if the first trade never happened, the second trade is viable and a valid entry. It's a buy setup. So what if we're already in it? What do we do? Do we just take the second trade? The answer is yes and no. Okay, you can't just take the second trade without considering the first trade because you're already in it. You already own, if you were doing $500 risk, you already own 770 shares of this from the first trade, okay? So by the time you add to the second trade or take the second trade, you can't just ignore the 770 shares you have, okay? So if you were to just take the second trade by itself as a standalone trade and ignore the first trade, what would happen? Does anybody know? If you just ignored the first trade, 
and took the second trade as a stand. So you're in it with 770 shares and you just, you, you forgot about that for a second. And then you took the second trade. Does anybody know what would happen if you did that? Crickets, crickets, crickets. It's rhetorical. I'll answer it for you. Your risk would exceed your $500. And there's two ways to look at that. You go, well, it is a second trade. So technically, I guess I could do 2R risk because it's two separate trades. But the problem is it's on the same stock. So we don't generally want to double our risk because it's the same stock. So in this case, if you actually took, if you did $500 risk on a 35 cent stock, guys, you would need somewhere around 1,400 shares. Well, if you had 770 shares and you added 1,400, you'd have about 2,100 shares, right? Give or take, 2,140, whatever it is, okay? Well, if you had 2,100 shares with a average cost of like 203.93, 40 cent stop, you would have way more than a $500 risk. In fact, you would have about a seven or $800 risk. That's too much. So here's the deal. You can add to the second trade, right? You can add to this, but you can't add a full lot in this particular case. We'll, we'll, I'll show you some scenarios where you can. You can only add a partial lot, in this case, a quarter lot. Because by adding a quarter lot, it still maintains your $500 risk, okay? So you have 770 shares from the first trade. You add 350 shares to the second trade. You now have a total share size of 1,120. 770 shares plus 350 shares, you have 1,120. Your total risk is $507, close enough to 500, okay? So if the first trade worked by itself, you make a thousand bucks. That's good. Nothing wrong with it. Two to one, you make a thousand bucks. But if you add to the position on the second trade and you shoot for the same target, right? You shoot for the same target, which two to one target guys is like 205, what is it? 205.40 or something like that. Um, 65 cent stop times a 205.30. So, right, if you shoot for the same 205.30 target, you're now going to make 1500 bucks. Why? You're going to make 1500 bucks because you have more shares. Why were you able to have more shares? Because you were offered a second entry. That's the key to adding and reducing and pyramiding. The key is to make sure the ad area is a legitimate pattern, not some random area that you want to add because you think it looks cool. It has to be a legitimate pattern for you to add in that area. So by adding at 203.85, you gain one extra R for hitting the same target. I'll repeat it because this is the money thing. By adding at 203.85, you did not increase your risk at all. You kept your risk exactly the same at 500 bucks, but you made 500 more dollars by hitting the target, okay? So this adding is a way to accelerate and supercharge your trading. All right, so now let's move on to another one. I'm gonna break this down the way you guys should be breaking down every chart, okay? So here's a stock that ripped higher, okay? Wide bar, wide bar, doji bar. Pulls back to the rising moving average, pulls back to support, has about a 50% retracement. For those who have taken professional trading strategies, these are what we call location items. It has all three location items, rising moving average, minor price support or level one price support there, okay? Uh, sorry, level two price support there, okay? And then a 50% retracement. So that looks good. That is what? A perfect buy setup. You have a bottoming tail, a couple of doji bars. You're gonna buy the stock right in this area right there. You're gonna put your stop loss under the bottoming tail. So I think we can all agree without knowing what the future looks like, that's a nice buy setup. Okay, it's a 20 period moving average for somebody that's currently asking. All right, so that's a nice buy setup. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows. Bottoming tail, doji bar, all three location items. Great. Let's move on. Now what do we have? Now we have same chart, same stock, 
what do we have? A consolidation here at 4340. Sitting here, consolidating, 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 moving back towards the rising moving average. Okay. And that is your time correction we talk about. Everybody always asks, well, how do I know that the breakout has rested long enough when it gets back to the moving average? Doesn't have to touch it, just has to get near it. Okay. In this case, it gets all the way back to the moving average. It's in a very tight, narrow range. It has the volume drop at the bottom. So your entry here would be 43.40 with a stop at like 43.25 or something like that, give or take. It's a tight stop loss. Okay. So we see the buy setup here. We see the breakout here. We're not done. We're not done. Patience. All right. How about this? Now, what do we have? I mean, we're kicking on all cylinders here. Same chart, guys. Same chart. Wide range igniting bar. Narrow range resting bar. Pretty much at the high of the day. It's slightly off the high, but close enough to take it. Right around that 4360 mark. So what are we going to do? We're going to look to enter above the high here, which is 4360, with a stop under the bottoming tail bar on the third bar. Everybody always asks me, how do you enter a three bar play? You enter on the third bar as soon as it breaks bar one and bar two's high. You enter on the third bar as soon as it breaks the high of bar one and bar two. Okay? So in this case, 4360 ish stops like 4345, 4350. What do we have? Buy setup, breakout, three bar play. They're all happening on the same damn chart. Right? They're all happening on the same chart. So I want to comment on a couple things. One, for some strange, odd, crazy, weird phenomenon reason, somebody emailed me the other day and said, Jared, three bar plays can only happen in the first 15 minutes of the day. That's what you said. And I said, please show me the video timestamp because I've never said that. Three bar plays are valid at any and all times of the day from 9.32 to 3.02 in the afternoon and everywhere in between, just like this one happening at 11.30, okay? And that goes for all patterns. All patterns are valid in all time frames, one minute charts up to monthly charts, and all patterns are valid all the time throughout the day. There's no one time of the day you can't trade. Are there times of the day where your odds might be lowered like lunchtime? Yes, but it doesn't mean you can't take the trade. Okay, so in this case, we have a truly, truly outstanding chart. We have three separate individual patterns on this chart, and all three of them are really, really good. Okay, but let's be honest for a moment. Come on, come on, pony up, be honest. How many of you are so chicken shit, there's no way you would have taken that second or third trade? About 90% of you, you would have bought the buy setup, and you would have been like, Oh, that's a nice break. I, I'm already in it. I'm already in it. I'm already in it. Oh, wow. Look at that three. I'm already in it. I'm already in it. I'm already in it. Yes, most of you. Babies with your little binkies and blankies out there. Scared, right? Why? Let me ask you a question. What if, okay, what if we did this? Okay, hold on one second. Just bear with me for a second. Bear with me. What if we did this? And that, okay, that was the beginning of the day. You'd be jonesing to take that breakout, wouldn't you? If that was the beginning of the day and it started off the day, you'd be like, oh, sweet breakout, right? Okay, hold on. What if, what if that was the beginning of the day? You'd all be going, wow, Sweet, awesome three bar play. I got to take that three bar play. So you're basically a prisoner of the first trade you take. You're a prisoner of the first trade you take, aren't you? So in this case, in this particular example, the first trade you took happened to be the buy setup because it was the first trade that happened. If the breakout was the first trade, you would have taken that. If the three bar play was the first trade, you would have taken that. But oh my goodness, God forbid, they all happen on the same chart. Here's the beauty though. Here's the beauty. These are your entries, okay? I think we've made that clear. I just wanted to bring it up just so you can see it, how it looks. There's the first trade. There's the second trade. 
there's the third trade. When it says, what's this at the top? What's this down here at the bottom? What are we talking about? Novice ending volume, right? Huge volume spike after an extended move equals an ending volume pullback. Great. This chart happened like better than you could even put it in any textbook. All right. So now, how does this all look when you actually man up, throw the binky away, cut up the blanket, and trade like a professional? How does it, how does it look? It looks just like this. It's going to take me a minute to explain it, so bear with me. First trade entry is 43.15. First trade stop is 43.05. Second trade entry is 43.40. Second trade stop is 43.30. Third trade entry is 43.55. Third trade stop is 43.4. Now we know individually what each one of these trades looks like individually, but we're not trading them individually anymore because once you get in the first one, you're going to add on the second and you're going to add on the third and your cost average is going to change. So there are three separate trades on this chart. Assume a $500 risk per trade and a full lot add for each new trade. Full lot add. That means $500 risk add for each one. You're like, whoa, whoa, slow down. You'll see, you'll see. How much would you have made on this trade if you implied a five minute bar by bar? Well, on the buy setup, on the breakout, or on the three bar play, right? I mean, you gotta, which one did you take? That's the problem, you're only taking one. Now, if you took the buy setup on a bar by bar, you'd probably be out in the breakout. If you took the three bar play on a bar by bar, you'd probably be out at 44.10. All that's well and good. You traded from 43.55 to 44.10. Great, sounds great. You made 60, 70 cents. whoop de duck whoop de doo 55 cents. Five to one, huh? Not bad. Let's grow up a little for a second. If you bought 5,000 shares at 43.15 with a 10 cent stop, that's a $500 risk, right? 10 cent stop, $500 risk equals 5,000 shares. If you sold it at 44.10, you would have made $4,750 or nine and a half to one. So here, hear me out. If you bought it at 43.15, follow me guys, follow me, and you sold it at 44.10, you would have made 4,700 bucks. Hell of a trade, hell of a trade. Very impressive, dog shit. Dog shit. But how much could you have made by adding at 43.40 and 43.55 and raising your stop up? Well, your average cost entry would have been 43.366. 43.15, 5,000 shares. 43.40, 5,000 shares. 43.55, 5,000 shares. Your average cost, 43.366. Where's your new stop loss? It's 43.45, why? Because every time we add, we raise the stop to that area of the chart. So when you add at 43.40, your stop loss gets raised to under the consolidation. Why? Because that's a standalone pattern where you would normally have the stop loss. If you add at 43.55, you raise your stop to 43.45 because that's where the stop loss is on the three bar play, which is a standalone trade. So your stop loss 43.45. Guess what? By the time you add to the last trade, you're already 10 cents in the money. The worst you can do on this trade at that point is what? 150 bucks? No, 1500. My apologies. The worst you can do at that point is 1500 bucks. That's the worst you can do by the time you add to the third trade is make 3R. Wow. So you wait a second, Jared. So if I add at 43.55, you're telling me the worst I can do here is like $1,500. Yeah, if you stop out, you're still gonna make 1,500 bucks. If you stop out, you're still gonna make 3R. But what if it works? Well, get out at 44.10, bar by bar, 73 cent gain, $11,000. Guys, here's the kicker. Here's the money, here's the money line. Never, ever, 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 even one second, did you ever risk more than $500 to do this? Not one time during this trade 
did your risk ever exceed $500? In fact, as the trade went on and you added at 43.40 and you added, your risk actually decreased. So you reduced your risk and you increased your potential gain. Hence, add and reduce. You added shares but reduced your risk. I'm gonna repeat it. Added shares and reduced your risk. So you're getting the option here of adding at 43.40. If you did that, your cost average would be what? 43.27, your stop loss is 43.30. You're already in the money on the second ad. Only two or three pennies, but you're already gonna make at least two or three hundred dollars as soon as you add on the second trade. As soon as you add, you're already in the money. Once you add on the third trade, you're already three R in the money, okay? So yes, two to one sounds good, make a thousand bucks. 4,700 at nine R sounds great. But how about 11 grand and you only ever risked $500, okay? Wow, it's impressive. Now, I'm not here to suggest that this is for everybody. Some people are, need more time to practice this, and that's okay. It's not for everybody, but when you add properly, man, oh man, it's a very, very powerful tool. Now, remember, not every stock will give you an opportunity to add, right? A lot of stocks don't give that opportunity, but when you get it, take advantage of it, okay? Take advantage of it. Now, having said all that, it doesn't always work, right? Here's an example. Let's go through it again. Let's break it down. This was from a couple days ago. This is a trade that Unmall took a couple days ago on INO. I think some of you guys remember taking this. So. The first trade of the day, okay? Somebody's asking, do you take any off as the stock climbs? That depends on your management. If you want to take a quarter or a half off at uh, 2R or 3R or 4R, you can. But remember, in this case, on that last ad, you're already up 3R. As soon as you add to the position, you're up 3R. As soon as you buy it, you're up 3R on the ad. So it's up to you. Um, but, you know, the goal, obviously, is to let at least half of it get to a big target. Anyway. So here's an example, guys, right here on INO from a couple days ago. Unwall took this trade in the chat room. This is a perfect textbook one-minute turnaround bar. It's an engulfing bar. So we had a wide-range red bar followed by a wide-range green bar, and it's an engulfing bar, turnaround bar, okay? So he got in at 11.30, give or take, all right? Maybe it was a little bit later, but give or take, with a stop loss right down here at 11 bucks, couple pennies under the low of the day. That's normal. That's Nothing unusual about this, okay? The entry was by the book. The stop loss was under the low of the day. Perfect. Target's $11.90 for two to one, right? It's $11.90. Stock went to $11.85 or $11.84, okay? $11.84. You missed target by six cents. Bummer, right? Hold on, hold on. So you're up there, you're a little frustrated, but you're still in the stock. It hasn't stopped out. Hasn't stopped out, okay? Move on, hold on. Now, now, what do you see here? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower low, bottoming tail, doji bar, 50% retracement. I see a buy setup. Separate the trades. The first trade is a turnaround bar, an engulfing bar. That's a standalone trade by itself. Now we see a second standalone trade. And that second standalone trade is a buy setup. Okay, so I see a really nice buy setup. Entry would be 1145 and you would raise your stop to 1125. So if you were already in at 1130, you would add at 1145 and you would raise your stop to 11.25, okay? So it looks like this, okay? Here they are side by side, the first trade on the left, okay? Second trade on the right, got it? So now, hear me out. If we add on this trade, okay? We add, our cost average is right in the middle. Take 11.30 plus 11.45 and divide by two. 
comes out to 1138, 1137, five, whatever, okay? Whatever. So now you have a cost average of 1138. Your risk actually goes down by 25 bucks, right? Your risk goes down by 25 bucks. Your share size goes up, right? You double your share size, okay? And your potential gain almost doubles, right? So your the first trade on this, on the left, we were looking to make two to one or a thousand bucks. Five hundred dollars times two is a thousand. But by adding and getting to the same target, you're almost doubling your potential gain here. Okay, you actually lowered your risk by twenty-five, but you increased the possible gain by two to one. And again, you're looking for the exact same eleven ninety target. You're looking for the same target. So so far, you're going. Damn, this is sweet. We just missed target earlier, but it might actually be a good thing that we missed target because now if we hit target after the pullback, we're gonna make twice as much money. This is really working out great. Okay, bottoming tail here, beautiful buy setup, 1190 target. We're gonna make twice as much money. And then this happens. Then this happens. This buy setup, doesn't work. You buy, you add on the buy setup. It pops up, looks really good. You're all excited. You're like, damn, this is sweet. And then it stops out. It breaks below the bottoming tail right here, stops out, and ultimately hits the 1190 target. Now, what's the problem here? You obviously could not have known that this was going to stop out. But here's the rub. Had you not added and kept your original stop, it held. Your stop was at the low of the day. This pullback that stopped you out never went past the low of the day. So had you never added, you would have ultimately hit your 1190 target. So if you added, you actually stopped out and lost money. If you simply took the first trade and let it go, you would have made a thousand when it hit target at 1190. I don't know why I put 1195. I think it was 1190, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You guys get the point. So now what? Does this mean we should never do add and reduce? No, that's not what it means at all. I'm just telling you that sometimes this happens. Was there anything that was done wrong here? No, nothing was done wrong. You did everything by the book. The first trade was textbook. The second trade was textbook. You added where you're supposed to add. You raised the stop loss where you're supposed to raise the stop loss. It just didn't work out. This is why we have stop losses, okay? Now, some unfortunately, some of you are gonna use this as a justification not to take your stop loss. Don't, take your stop. Lose one R, move on. Take your stop, lose one R, and move on. Okay. Now, could this be, hear me out, hear me out. Could this be an 84% rule trade? Damn right it could be. For those of you who watched my 84% rule video, you could get back in at 1148 with a stop at 1125. It would trigger right in this area, right? 1138. Stop would be down here. It just holds right there, and boom, you hit target. So there's a solution for that too. Okay, there's a solution for that too, all right? So now, the key is this. I've been preaching this a lot recently because you're not getting it yet. Nothing works every time, guys. If it did, we wouldn't need stop losses. Nothing works every time. What you're going for is what works most of the time. Unmall did a video on coin flips, coin flips right? Management is all about being consistent. It's all about being consistent. And many of you guys are changing your management every other week, every other month, because you're chasing the holy grail. There's no such thing, so stop. Now, I have another management that I think for the newer traders out there has the potential to really change your trading life, okay? I think it's profound, but it's really simple. It's like really simple, but profound. It's called half the shares, double the stop. I don't talk about it very much. I haven't talked about it in quite some time, actually. Half the shares, double the stop. 
This is what most new traders should be doing. Why? Because you're just not that good yet. You haven't fine-tuned your trading well enough to truly understand where the stop really needs to be. So you make a lot of mistakes about where your stop loss placement should be. Okay, so now let's take a look. Why? What's the purpose? What's the point of half the shares, double the stop? Okay, well, most traders confuse high reward to risk setups with tight stops. You do. Let's be honest. You do. You're like, well, gosh, if I could get a tighter stop, I'll make more money. No, that's not how it works for most traders, especially not new traders. We see it happen all the time in the trading room. I'll look at somebody and they'll be like, yeah, I made 7R on that. And I'm thinking, it didn't go 7R. How did you make 7R? And then they tell me their stop loss and it's like 14 cents and the spread was 22 cents. Like, wait a second. So your stop loss was 50%. The spread was 50% bigger than your stop. Yep. Uh-huh. Craziness. You guys really think that just tight stops are the way to go. It's not. The chart is your guide. And when you're new, you, you fumble around with the chart quite a bit. Okay. So this is a flawed approach. You know, it only takes one to run. That thought process is flawed. The slippage on the entry is nasty. The slippage on the exit is also nasty. High frequency trading has really done a good job of adding to our slippage, right? So the tighter your stop and the higher your risk, the more trouble you're going to get yourself into. And the other thing too is it's just not scalable. You can't be taking these super crazy tight stop losses with 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 shares. It's not scalable because most of the time the spread is too big to even get filled on that. And then if you do stop out, oh my goodness, you're going to get slippage on entry. So you're paying up. And then when it stops out, you're going to get double the slippage because you had half the stop loss. And now you're going to lose two or three to one instead of one to one. Okay. The other area for new traders, this is very important. One of the most important points to pay attention. Support is not a single penny. I know a lot of you guys look at a bottoming tail and you're like, oh yeah, okay. The bottom of the bottoming tail is 2550. So that's exactly where I'm going to put my stop loss, 2550. Because that's to the penny where the bottom of the bottoming tail is. Wrong. There are areas. It could go down to 2540 and then bounce back up. It doesn't mean that that support area was taken out just because it dropped five cents below or 10 cents below it. It's still that area. It's a range. Okay. So thinking that's a support point will hold to a penny is just naive. It's what new traders do. Give them some room in those areas. Okay. Now I understand certain styles or certain types of trading are more conducive to that. Meaning if you're taking breakouts, well, let's be honest, if it breaks below the consolidation, you know, you could be in trouble, although they often do shake out and come right back up. But a lot of new traders think that support and resistance is just a penny. It's not a penny point. It's a general area. Okay. Statistically, most losing trades stop out shortly after entry. I find this to generally be true for my style as well. It's not always true. It's not true 100% of the time, maybe 70%. Meaning if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and it doesn't work quick. Now, every once in a while you're in a winning trade and then the market rolls over like it's doing right now, right? You're in a stock, it's looking higher and then boom, the market collapses. That happens, but generally speaking, if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work quick, generally speaking, okay? So here's the thing, using half the shares twice the stop, you're not going to stop out as often. You're going to stop out far less often. It also adds a level of flexibility to your trading you've never had before. There's more flexibility with regard to raising your stop later. Okay, there's more flexibility with being able to add in certain areas. There's more flexibility when it breaks a pivot point. Hey, you're 50 cents below that pivot point now because you gave it twice the stop. Instead of being two pennies below, you're 50 cents below. So when they break that pivot or that area and come right back up, you're not going to stop out. Okay? Ever have that happen? Get tagged by a couple pennies and watch it go higher to your target? Annoying, frustrating, right? Okay? So this concept of half the shares and double the stop is really powerful. And I bet you very few, if any of you are even using, you never even thought to. Okay, so let's take a look at a chart, see how it goes, okay? Now, this is a trade that I took. 
I took it. And I got tagged at break even. What if? What if? I did what I'm telling you to do. The trade I took was 204 entry. Stop loss was 203.35. That's the trade I took. And I got tagged at even. What if you did half the shares twice the stop? So now instead of a 65 cent stop that I had, you have a dollar thirty stop loss. So instead of 203.35 as your stop, your stop is 202.70. Same entry though. So imagine you risk 100 bucks. You're going to take 75 shares roughly. It's a dollar 30 stop, okay? Your target is going to be 206.60. Your gain is still 2 to 1. You're still looking for 2 to 1. So what are the pluses and minuses? Well, you're going to stop out less often. That's a positive. Fewer shares, you're going to eat up less buying power. For you new traders, I know a lot of you guys have smaller account sizes. So you're going to need fewer shares, which costs less money. Okay. Slippage is not going to be nearly as bad because if you take 10 cent slippage on this, what's worse? 10 cent slippage on a dollar 30 stop or 10 cent slippage on a 65 cent stop loss. Obviously, as a percentage, the slippage is far less on a dollar 30 stop than a 65 cent stop, assuming all things being equal and you take the same amount of slippage. Okay. It's also going to help you fine tune your trading. It gives you so much more flexibility. Here's the beauty. You get to raise your stop up. So when this pivot happened, you can use raise your stop up, but use the same concept, right? Instead of having your stop at 202.70, raise your stop by the amount the pivot was. So if the pivot was 20 cents different, say this was 203.35 and this was, I don't know, 203.60. Now you can raise your stop up by 25 cents, right? And now same target. But now you're not going to lose as much if, if you stop out, okay? Now, negatives. Now, it takes a lot longer to hit your target. I mean, you're going to be in these trades a lot longer most of the time, okay? Sometimes holding till the end of the day, sometimes, okay? You're not going to hit as many targets. Why? Because now you need twice as much. Instead of a $1 target, you need a $2 target. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of new traders are going, well, if I'm not going to hit as many targets, I'm not going to do it. You're going to stop out way less often. And here's the beauty. A lot of them, you'll have to close out at the end of the day, and they may not be at your target, but they'll be in the money. Plus 1R, plus 1.5R, something like that. Okay? Yes, I followed my plan to the letter of the law on this. It went over 1R, I raised to break even, and then it hit target. All right? So in this case, the flexibility that this offers is far superior to the lack of targets that you might not hit. Far superior. Here's another great example. What if, right? What if you took this buy setup on INO? Why am I using these? Because these are real trades that just happened two days ago. Say you take the buy setup on INO at $11.45. Normally, your stop loss is at $11.25, correct? Normally. So you would be 11.45 entry, stop loss 11.25. So you have a 20 cent stop, but we're going to do half the shares, double the stop. So now instead of 11.25, we're going to do 11.05 on the stop loss just under the low of the day. Guess what happened? The buy setup triggered. Normally you would have stopped out, but because you did double the stop, the stop held. The negative is you didn't hit your full target, but guess what you did do? You closed out at the end of the day for 1.25R. You made money on a trade that you otherwise would have stopped out on. I know I talk slow and repeat myself. It's just because most of you don't pay attention. So I'll repeat myself. Had you taken this trade normally, you would have stopped out and lost a hundred bucks. If you took half the shares, double the stop, you would have made 125 instead of losing 100. So $225 swing in your account. It's a 2.2R swing in your account. This is good for new traders because you mess up the stop loss a lot of the time. You're not sure where to put it. So if you give it more room, you have more flexibility for the stock to wiggle around. Yes, it's harder to hit targets, but this situation happens frequently. 
it holds your stop because it's wider. Maybe you don't get full target, but at least you make money versus stopping out. Okay? So I hope that makes sense to you guys. All right? I hope it makes sense. Full circle. Let's go all the way back. And we're going to put them both together. You know, what do you mean? We're going to put the add and reduce together with the half shares full stop. Or half, half shares twice the stop. We're going to do both. You're going to take the first trade with a super wide stop. First trade, 204, super wide stop, right? Double the stop. So your two to one risk to reward is 206.60. 75 shares, got it? Add, now remember, we're doing double the stop, half the shares, double the stop. So 203.85, the entry doesn't change. The entry is the same. But instead of having the tight stop loss at 203.50, Remember earlier, the stop was 203.50. Now you're at 203.15. So these are the, the trades separated. First trade, second trade, let's put them together. Now we put this, the trades together, okay? So now we're gonna do the add and reduce, but we're gonna do it with half the shares twice the stop. So you take the first trade, okay? Got 75 shares of it. You add half on the second trade and you raise your stop now what do we have 203.92 cost average right you buy it 204 you add it 203.85 add them together divide by two you're roughly 203.92 your stop loss is 203.15 so that brings you down to what a 77 cent stop loss something like that so now your target's still 206.60 because that's the original stop and now what instead of making 2r you make 3.4 R. So you can still use half the shares twice the stop. You can still do that. And you can still add. You get the best of both worlds. So note, we couldn't use a full risk on the second trade ad because it would take us above our max $100 risk. So the second trade ad had to be a half lot ad because money management is always number one. Okay. Most of the time, you'll be able to add a full lot on the second trade. I showed you earlier on that one trade, we added full two different times. Most of the time you can add full. Sometimes you have to add a little bit less. But the whole goal is to what? Increase your potential gain while reducing your exposure to loss. That's the whole goal of add and reduce. Half the shares, twice the stop is just a great idea for newer traders to stay in trades longer and not get stopped out so much. It adds flexibility, okay? So real quick, you'll see, Baba guys, this is the trade I took on. This is the trade I took. This thing basically was looking really, 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 really good and then came all the way back out and trailed me out and I made 230 bucks on it and then it went to full target. I followed my plan, I broke it slightly. I sold a little bit more than a third there. But basically, for all intents and purposes, one R was hit break even happened, trailed out. Had you done everything I just talked about, we would have made well over a thousand bucks on this. Okay. We would have made well over a thousand bucks. Now, another one. Why am I showing you this? It has nothing to do with today's lecture, but everything to do with today's lecture. I'm showing you this because this is what dumb trading looks like. And I did this. When was this? Last week. I did this last week. We took a decent play. It was a kind of a three bar play. Bar number two is a little bit bigger than I would have liked, right? A little bit, but all in all, a one minute three bar play. And I lost 400 bucks on it. Guess what happened to Lyft? It worked. So how in the world did I lose $400 on a trade that worked? Well, read along. I raised my stop and got tagged at 30.01 on the penny right there. Look at the cursor. Look at my cursor right there. Got tagged right there, right there, right there. And what happened? It ripped higher, went to full target. Our target on this was about a dollar thirty ish, something like that. It ended up being like thirty one eighty, and you can see right here it hit target. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't break your plan, because your plan is always right, even on days. When your plan loses money, your plan is always, always, always right. Why was this such a, such a big deal? Why did this hurt so much? It hurt so much because 
I should have made a thousand and instead I lost 400. It's a $1,400 difference in your P&L. How many times have you guys done this? It's rhetorical, but I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. You do it probably several times a week. Unmall uses a word around here called integrity. Integrity means do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. That Bill Belichick line, do your job. That's what your trading plan is for. If you're struggling to follow your trading plan, maybe that plan isn't right for you. Maybe it needs a little bit of an adjustment, okay? Well, my point I'm making is, is I broke my plan. I raised my stop. Why did I raise it? I didn't want to get slippage. I literally thought, man, if Lyft breaks $30, I'm going to get crushed with slippage. Well, Lyft showed me, came right down to 30.01, filled me right at, take a look at my order. 30.01, look at it, right there. Filled me on the penny. Boom. Pops hits target. Don't do it. Follow your plan. Follow your plan. So in summary, you cannot ever have a perfect management strategy for all market environments, guys. You can't, it's impossible. Some market environments are better for scalping. Some market environments are better for holding for huge targets. And your question in your head is, well, how do we know the difference? You don't. You don't know the difference. And this is why over a 12-month trading year, you will not have 12 great months. You're going to have six average months, 15, 20R, three really good months where you make 25, 30, 35, and three really crappy months. You might break even a month. You might lose a little bit. You might only make five or six R. That is a normal year. I'll repeat it. Six normal months, 10, 15, 20 R, 20 R. Three really good months where you're like 50, 100% better than normal, 30 R maybe. And then three crap months where you break even, lose a little, make a little. Why? Multiple reasons, but mainly management. One, you might just not be that good that month. Maybe you made some mistakes, but more important, your management is not perfect for every environment. You stick to it. You stick to it. Because most of the time in the long run, it all comes out in the wash. Sometimes 1R scalp targets work better. Sometimes 5R huge swing type targets work better. Notice I try something kind of in the middle. Why? Because it works most of the time. All right? You just have to appreciate that the difference in goal attaining and profit protecting, you can't really have both all of the time. Management is all about expectation, 100% about expectation, knowing what you're expecting. For example, you cannot expect to get huge targets managing on a one minute chart. You cannot expect to protect all of your gains managing on a 15 minute target, 15 minute chart. You're gonna have to loosen it up, give it some wiggle room. You might be up four R and it pulls back to plus one R and maybe it tags you, who knows? Yes, can you find a hybrid approach? Yeah, you can, but it's still not going to be perfect, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about add and reduce and pyramiding as well as half the shares, double the stop. I've never really talked about half the shares, double the stop in a while. It's been at least a year since I've talked about that topic. Um, so for you new traders, I would highly recommend, highly recommend that you do that. Okay, and I also just want to give one last shout out. I don't want to say the person's name, put them out there publicly. Adrian, sorry. Um, wow, what a great year last year for you. I know, I know you're off to another great start this year, but congrats to you. Scalp perfect where it's supposed to be. Swing above where it's supposed to be, and your IRA is killing it. So congrats to you. All right. Now, that's going to do it. For this week's lecture, I hope you guys learned a little bit, and I hope you'll actually take some of that advice and apply it and take it seriously. I'm Jared Wesley. We'll get back at it again next week. Take care, guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way, you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.